Yo, what's up? This is Black Visions TV. My name is Cole J and I'm here with Mr. Top Boy up in the building right now, Mr. Ashley Waters. How you doing, bro? Yeah, all good, man. All good. Um, first of all, I want to say like a big, big congratulations with like, the success of Top Boy 01. I mean, everyone was just crazy over it, man. I mean, what was that like, the whole feedback from that whole experience for you? Um, just all all good, really. All positive. As you know, like with and if any new product, there's always going to be people that, some people that don't like it, you know, but I think with this, with Top Boy, it was a majority, it was loved um, across the nation, really, and by everyone that saw it. Um, it's just had some huge success and it's got a huge cult following that right now, so uh, it's just about pushing forward with season two and hoping we can match that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, Especially with like the, you know you know like the increases on like social media with Twitter and Facebook, they just blew it off the chain, man. Like you, you was getting top trends every week, it was mad. Yeah, no, it was a good. As I said, it was a good look. That's the first time I've done anything that has trended mm. um, or whatever. So uh, yeah, it's good, man. It's a good feeling, and and um, I hope, as I said, I hope we can achieve it again. No, I'm pretty sure you will, though, man. Like everyone knows you as like Asha, obviously like Asha D. Um, I know that you started off as an actor, the then musician, and then back to acting. So how how's that the whole transition back in the movies been for you? Um, to be honest, it's been everything that I've trained for. But I started to sound like an Olympian, or, you know, <laughs> like a footballer after the game. You know, to be honest, John, you know, it's the, nah, I, I went to Sylvia Young, theatre school, um, when I was really young, about six, seven years old. Um, and in that, in, 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 uh, that drama school you train in music you train in all fields of entertainment so for me it's not really been a weird thing to make the transition or do anything different I just think it's more mainly weird to other people I think a lot of people assume that I was um, an MC before I became an actor but I've always been acting and doing music um, so for me it's been perfectly natural um, and I, I've enjoyed it and I enjoy having more than one string to my bow. No, 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 seriously, definitely, I, I appreciate that, I mean, like, what, what's it like being working with, with Kane or It's cool, well? man. Um, Kane, like, I got a lot of respect for the for, for the kid, man. He mm. kind of just, you know, for him, he's never done any acting before. That was going to be my next so, question, you know, man. Yeah, I've, I've read it. Um, so <laughs> he just stepped out of, he's, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm on point to like, no, I'm joking. <laughs> Now he just kind of stepped out the whole music thing mm. and jumped into acting. And one thing, like as making that transition, you know, having not done it before, you have to realize that you can't bring. He couldn't bring Kano onto mm. the Top Boys set. He had to bring Kane Robinson. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I and be a be a blank canvas um, and be vulnerable and do what the part required him to do rather than what Kano would do. Mm. And he and he did that well. I, I respect him for that. I think he did really well. I think he plays a madman. Really well. I, it's like, I see like a different side to him. I mean, obviously I heard about, you know, like the Home Sweet Home and a London Boy mixtape, but I see like a different raw side to him where he just didn't give a damn in, in, in that thing, man. Yeah, yeah, of course, he went all out. I mean, that's what Sully was all about. Someone crazy, but believable crazy. You know, like, you know, mad people don't walk around going ah, 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 like that, like, do you know what I mean? But there's some people that kind of will go beyond the call of duty. There's some people that yeah. will do more than what's required. There's some people that will do more than the rest of the, everyone else. Um, and Sully's just one of those characters. If he says he's gonna do something, he's pretty much gonna do it. It's, yeah. it's a promise, so. Um, yeah, I mean, he was perfect for that part. Oh, wicked, man. So so what can people actually, you know, look forward to, you know, you know for Top Boy 2? Because it's been, a, we all been waiting. Even I've been waiting, bruv. Even I, I've been waiting. I could find it hard to put this into words. Right. So what I've been doing in my last interviews, no word of a lie, this is what I'll say. The next top boy is gonna be oh, you heard it there first. No 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 you haven't even heard it. You you saw it there first. You saw it there. I you stood still a word to describe what that is. Who could tell me what that means? No one. But that's what top boy is gonna be. Could I just get a little tip of the iceberg? I know it's you and Kano, but any, anyone else underground, like um, Scorcher, anyone, anyone else in there no, that I should know about? Just dead, man. Oh, no, not Scorcher. Back from the dead. This is not you, you, you never know. You never know. Like, <laughs> you never know. Like, this is Top Boy. Top boy you never know, man. Anything could happen. Nah, um, 
Nah, yeah, there's a few more. There's a few more names and faces mm. thrown into the hat. Um, you got, um, you know, EXO. Yeah. Yeah, EXO's in there. Um, Nole okay. as well. Um, there's another one as well, like another big name. I'm not gonna say. I'll let you lot, you know, see that for yourself. Just leave me, just leaving me hanging there, bro. It's it's all good having little gems to discover whilst you're going through the world of Top Boy, isn't it? <laughs> Being that Top Boy was first broadcasted just after the London riots, right? Did you feel that the timing was right to show that kind of drama at such a vital stage when black youths were being seen as in in, in a really negative kind of light? Um. I don't think, it, I mean, I, as far as I know, I don't think it was planned, but you've got to understand as an actor, you're not really on that level of commissioning and whatever and when it goes out. I don't think it was planned. I think it was all coincidence, but a nice coincidence because I think Top Boy, you know, it, it, it expresses like the real, after seeing the riots, through watching Top Boy, which is a real slice of life, you can see how how hungry people are, you know, how desperate people are, how, how, um, how a community has become, you know, um, the way that, that Summer House is. And I think we've got loads of those places like that across London, across the UK in general, um, closer to people than they actually think. So it's, it's something for us to all be aware of. I think it fitted in nicely coming after the riots um, because I think that it was people's mood at that time and what we yeah. captured in Top Boy was exactly kind of pretty much what is going on in the streets. No, I definitely hear that, man. I mean, as for you, you come, you coming from music into movies, you know, you're a huge inspiration to a hell of a lot of people, bruv. Enough people, you're a big inspiration. So when your career's over, what would you want to be remembered for? No. Um, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I, at the end of the day, I feel like, like the acting thing is all good and whatever. I don't really rate myself as highly as people probably think I do, so... I have issues and insecurities with all of that stuff. So I think the main reason why if everyone's feeling it so much and I ain't really feeling it that much myself is that I'm probably here for a bigger reason than Top Boy or whatever else. And that's just to inspire other people to, to do the same, I suppose, mm. um, and keep the, the, the world pushing forward. So, you know, to that, other, to that little kid who's eating his Monster Munch or eat his Cocoa Pops right now, you know, watching this on the internet, he's probably going to be the next me. So hurry up, man. Come, hurry up. I'm tired out here. <laughs> well, boy, boy, again, thank you for coming and, and talking to us, bruv. No, no worries, man. Thanks it's a lot, man. It's been a long time. And I want to give the best of luck with Top Boy 2, because Top Boy 1 was off the chain. So uh, <laughs> Top Boy 2. Top Boy 2. Waters, baby, Waters. I'm here with the director with Top Boy 2, John Van Talleken. How you doing, bro? All right, how you doing? I'm doing really, really well, mate. Excited to see, like, you know, you know, like the new project. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. Uh, I hope so. I hope it's well received, you know. No, nah, definitely, man. All right, so, um, you know, obviously we've got like a couple of questions about it because obviously Top Boy has been a big controversial yeah. uh, movie. I know that you were the one to do the first one, yeah. but what made you take an interest to direct this season? You know, I mean, the first one was, uh, you know, it's just great TV. It explored, you know, really great narrative themes. It was, uh, you know, great characters. Uh, you know, it had all the all the stuff that was really cinematic, um, and uh, and and it was it was subtle in a way that a lot of TV is black and white, good and evil, mm -hmm. and uh, and Top Boy sort of explored the nuance of that, and you know, uh, a world that I think you don't get to see on TV TV very much. I haven't seen it on British TV. So when I was offered the chance to get to do season two, I mean, I just jumped at it. You just jumped straight in the head first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it was just one of those things where, you know, it's a year long commitment. You know, as a director, you don't often do that. You take, you know, it was a job for a year. You know, there were four episodes. And uh, and from my point of view, it was just immediately just going, yeah, this is, uh, this is amazing. And I mean, Ashley and Kane getting to work with them. Uh, they're fantastic. The kids are all fantastic. And Ronan, the writer, is, is great. And just uh, getting to explore those themes that were sort of started in the first one and kind of looking at that world open up um, was really, really exciting. It was cool. And as a director, that, you know, that's what you want to do. You want to tell interesting stories, nuanced stories. And that's what Top Boy sort of provides. Okay. I mean, I tried to kind of get this out of Ashley earlier on, but what kind of things that have you put into this one that wasn't in the previous Top Boy? I would say like the world opens up a bit more. So uh, that, 
yeah, some of the themes that were started in Top Boy 1 are kind of expanded in Top Boy 2. So they become, uh, you know, we look at we look at Ashley getting more successful, Deshane becoming more successful, his kind of rivalry with Sully um, and how that works. A rivalry, a rivalry, really? Serious? Yeah, well, you know, you end season one with a bit of a rivalry. You know, yeah, season one ends yeah. with them apart and we yeah, sort of explore yeah. that. And looking at, you know, what happens when Deshane becomes more successful, when Sully becomes more successful, like how do these people work on, uh, you know, deal with that, work their way up. Mm. And, you know, again, we also look at the kids and in fact, I think we really explore, we look at uh, two new kids in it and look at how uh, the pressure's on them within the community and, uh, and they're both from sort of different backgrounds in it. And one is very much within the gang uh, that Deshane runs and another kid is really from sort of a problem household and his mother is a, a drug addict. Um, and so we sort of look at those two, look, those two worlds as well. You, you must have had some fun doing this, man. You must yeah. have had some crazy fun. It was, uh, I've got to say, it was <laughs> tough. It was, uh, it was like a 70 day shoot and it was all outside in, in Hackney and Kingston and Lambeth. And like, it was, uh, yeah, it was difficult, but I've got to say the guys, you know, as a director, what you want is to be surrounded by nice guys and Ashley and Kane and the kids brought so much energy to it and Lorraine and, and you know, we got this guy Paul Anderson in who's, who's in the Sherlock movies and things and, you know, everyone in it was amazing. Mm. So it was, you always felt like it was like, it was like being at war. Like all of us were like as a team just sort of, you know, fighting to get this story done. And uh, yeah, I mean, that, that was amazing. It was a real sort of, uh, a real camar a camaraderie on the set, but it, definitely tough. I mean, outside Hackney, February, it's really fun working with these these younger kids and like mm. Ashley and Kane particularly become you know became sort of a mentor to them and it was just fun working with these guys who'd never done anything in the industry and just like and we you know uh, one of them we'd street cast straight out of uh, straight out of Hackney and just it was amazing to just take this kid and introduce him to this whole world yeah. and yeah it was it was uh, fantastic to see him sort of grow on the set yeah I mean really that was going to be uh, one of my next questions really actually you know about the impact of of what you do and how and really how it's really impacted young you know young youth and you know young kids of that today yeah i mean what i guess i hope is that it what we're trying to do is sort of uh have a have a look at a world that isn't you know shown on tv mm. i hope that a lot of um it felt like when we were in filming there that what we saw was that a lot of kids were saying wow this is you're showing something that is familiar to us um and that we we haven't you know that we haven't been able to see ourselves on TV, and it's very empowering to see that to see yourself have your stories told and have your story told in a nuanced way as well. Like have your story told where it's not just everyone's good or evil, um, and sort of try and find not necessarily condoning it, but to understand at least why these circumstances happen. You know, in a minority uh, in a minority of cases in in these neighbourhoods. Um, and so I think that was, it was really interesting. And, and, you know, I think also, I hope what you take away from the show is that it's not great. Like it's not great to be a gangster. It's not great to be a drug dealer. Like I would say the de the definitive message behind it is like, it shows what's, you know, it shows what's going on in certain sections of these communities, but it definitely, it doesn't, definitely doesn't condone it. Did you feel under pressure with like you know obviously you you filming in Hackney where all all them the, the crazy London riots happened and where like you know where there's like a big controversy about Top Boy when that first come out was you know how how did you deal with the pressure trying to live up to the name but all but try to kind of stem away from the negative point and try to put it into like a positive like how did you deal with that? I mean I've got to say that the Hackney community were incredibly supportive of us. Like all I ever saw was people being very supportive. Mm. You know, all the people we met uh, were, um, were, were very supportive about it and very thoughtful about it. And we really tried, you know, as they did with the last season with this one, really try and sort of meet with people from the community, speak with, speak with people on the streets. You know, uh, it, it is try and represent something, a slice of life of this world. And, and, you know, it is not just about drug dealing. It is about, you know, there are people in there who are struggling to run their own businesses, yeah. to, you know, to, to keep their hairdressers going, to, uh, to keep their, their, hou their house, you know, to, to yeah. get themselves off drugs. You know, there's, there's, there's all sorts of things, you know, people who are lawyers and, and uh, property owners. Mm. So I think we're trying to, ex we're trying to explore themes that aren't, it's not just one dimensional. It's not just, 
hey, here's a, here's a look at drug dealing. Yeah. Um, and certainly not an aim to glorify it in any way. I think the show really just does uh, give a thoughtful look into it. And, uh, and hopefully, I, I hope people feel that it looks at, um, you know, looks at something that is going on, you know, that just because, uh, just because you don't, just because you don't represent something on TV, it doesn't mean it's not happening. And I think, no, it, is really, I think it is really important that we put a human face to some of these problems that are going on. And, not just, not, and not just not address them. I mean, I think it's, uh, you know, we really tried to do something different and I hope people respond to that. Yeah. All right, well, Buff, thank you very much for talking to us, John. And best of luck for the premiere. Pleasure. And I hope to see you on TV ASAP. Cool. Yeah? You. Thank you for talking to us. Thanks, Black Visions TV, Done. we're out. Black Visions. TV